I know this past few days you've seen a lot of announcements from many different countries announcing new military packages and equipment for Ukraine, and sometimes it is very hard to kind of remember everything that has happened. So I put together a massive mini document, I call it mini document, kind of going over what Ukraine is receiving. Now it's not a complete list because things are still being announced as today the summit is still going on, but these are the biggest things and at least a little bit of information about them. So let's go ahead and break it down. Now, remember, this is over the course of a few days, so it's not like all these announcements came out together and some of these kind of trumped other ones, like someone would say one thing and then something bigger would come out. So let's start it off with Norway, who announced they were going to donate six more F-16s for Ukraine. Now, I want you to take a step back and remember that Zelensky says they need upwards of about 128, I believe, of these F-16s. With these six more, that would bring the total to roughly about 80 F-16s for Ukraine. That is still shy of what Zelensky needs. Remember that Russia has about 300 of them, so Ukraine needs, if not half, a little bit less than half to kind of combat that, especially because F-16s are way more advanced. Now, why is Norway giving six more? Well, it turns out that F-16s for other countries, well, they're outdated. And so these ones were taken out of service back in 2021, and they've just been sitting there. I'm sure that Norway's been sitting on them as, you know, a just-in-case kind of aircraft. But now knowing that, hey, we definitely don't need these anymore. They're going to get other ones, a different kind of aircraft. So now they're saying, we'll give these to Ukraine. The Prime Minister from Norway made this statement earlier saying, if we're going to provide aircraft, they must be aircraft that have all the capabilities to operate. They must meet the needs of Ukraine. So, that's why they're giving them their final six F-16s. Now, we know that other countries also have a couple of other ones that are kind of just sitting around. The questions really are that are coming out is that... Are they going to get these or give them to Ukraine? Or are they going to sit on them for a little bit and then give them to Ukraine down the line? Good questions. No answers. Next, Canada announced a $350 million military package to Ukraine. This is being broken down to a few different sections of those packages. First, they're going to be sending them new personnel carriers to Ukraine. I don't know how many. It didn't mention how many. But I'm assuming it's going to be a decent amount. $350 million. Maybe four or five. It's kind of, where, kind of where I'm looking at there. And then from there, they're allocating other money to different initiatives. So we've got the Czech Initiative, which is buying 155 millimeter shells for Ukraine. And they're buying them or they're finding them and getting them transferred to Ukraine. So we don't know how much money is going towards that. We have the other initiative, which is the German Initiative. That is to purchase air defense systems for Ukraine, which we'll get back to a little bit later in this video. And then the Polish Tank Initiative, which... I'm not going to lie to you, I didn't know it was an initiative. I, when this was the first time I looked it up, I actually had to start looking it up to see, wait a minute, how many tanks did Poland get? I actually couldn't find a number, but it is an initiative. So Canada's giving that to Ukraine. Next is Lithuania, who did it really smart, okay? And I have to commend for what they did. They announced their military package today because it turns out the package is already in Ukraine. And I like that. It's good that you should wait until Ukraine gets this stuff so that way Russia doesn't know what Ukraine has and they can kind of start countering that. So Lithia announced a new military package for Ukraine, which includes electronic warfare systems, ammunition, drones, ammunition for rifles, anti-drone rifles, military auxiliary equipment, and I had to add this in there, folding tables or beds, which was kind of interesting. I, I, I don't know why you would include that. That's kind of why you kind of leave off the list, but hey. Lithuania is helping. I don't know how many they're giving of them, but I guess they're good folding beds. Next is Denmark. They purchased a division of self-propelled howitzers for Ukraine. So what's a division? How many is that? 18. 18. That's right. They gave 18 or they're giving 18 to Ukraine. They actually came to Ukraine and said, hey, guys. You guys have many different kinds. We want to make sure you guys have something you're actually going to use and you're going to like it and it's something that works. Which one do you want? And so Ukraine was able to say, well, we want this one. And so they said, okay, we'll go ahead and get 18 for them for the defense forces of Ukraine. I mean, that's big. So thank you, Denmark. We appreciate that. Now over to the Netherlands, 
who is going to be purchasing different kind of weapons for the F-16s. According to the Minister of Defense of the Netherlands, he says, Ukrainians should not only be able to fly the F-16s, they must also be able to use the capabilities of the aircraft. Now, here's the good question. Which missile are we talking about? Because there's many different kinds. They don't tell us. They don't tell us how many they're going to buy, and we don't know the type. There are many options out there. Some really good American ones. That being said, um, I'm sure they're going to be top of the line because they're, they're making it seem like it's going to be something perfect for Ukraine and F-16s. New Zealand announced a new $10 million package for Ukraine, and it's kind of broken down very differently than other packages. So let's kind of talk about it. So it's a $10 million package for Ukraine. Within that, though, $6.1 million is for humanitarian aid only. Okay. Then there's $3.68 million kind of left over, and then that gets broken down more. $2.45 million is for the drone initiative, which is being led by the UK and Latvia. And then $1.23 million is going towards Ukraine's military medical needs. So as you can tell, they're not really, they're not giving weapons. They're more or less helping with humanitarian stuff and medical stuff. And then we don't know the type of drones. I'm assuming the way that they usually go with things is probably like recon drones, not the kamikaze ones we're seeing all the videos for online. Next is Japan. And Japan is donating mine clearing vehicles to Ukraine. Two of them this, this time. And it's one of those that have like the big arm on it. And it can kind of go in front and kind of remove things. Remember that one third of Ukraine has mines on it because of Russia. They mined everything. And I mean everything. We've seen videos of Russians mining bags of potatoes. Why? Because that's just Russia. That's what Russia does. And so they're going to give these equipment, these vehicles to Ukraine to bring to Zaporizhia and the Desk regions to perform those tasks of removing said mines, which once again... There is a lot of. And then lastly, air defense systems. Ukraine is getting five new air defense systems. And it's a mix of different kinds, and it's from different countries. So first, it's a partnership between the United States, the Dutch, the Germans, Italians, and Romanians. They all came together. They actually announced these things over the course of the past month, and I guess now they're kind of coming together to make this giant announcement saying, here is everything. Let's move forward with it. We're good to go. And so Ukraine is going to get five new air defense systems, bringing their total up to a decent amount. I believe that puts us at, I, I see, because they announced them individually, it kind of confuses you because I want to say eight, but I really think it might be six or I'm sorry, not six, seven. So, you know, I, I think that's where we're sitting at right now. It's probably going to be eight which is great for Ukraine. And probably one of the bigger things that's not on my list because it's really not something that's not like a, it's not a military package. But the UK had announced yesterday from Kirsten Starmer, who, you know, obviously is the new prime minister of the UK. He announced that Ukraine can use the British Storm Shadow to strike deep into Russia to go after those targets that are launching all of these strikes in Ukraine. And that's what Zelensky had said from the get-go, which is, we know where they're launching them from. We know where all the bases are. We know where everything is, but we don't have permission to hit it. And so yesterday, Kier gave the green light to Ukraine to use the British Storm Shadow, and I'm sure we'll see them soon, but right now, you see, it was what people don't understand. That was kind of like a snowball, because... The UK comes out and they say, hey, we're going to allow them to do X, Y, and Z. And it makes the United States look really bad, right? Because if the UK, which is a lot smaller than us, is not worried about Russia retaliating against this, then the United States, who has, you know, everything in the world, they shouldn't be scared. So now, according to an article I just put up about a half an hour ago, talks are underway to allow Ukraine to go deeper into Russia. Now, the question is, you know, is it going to be tomorrow? Is it going to be next week? When could that be? We don't know. We honestly don't know. And I, I wish it was tomorrow because we know that Ukraine knows where the stuff is. If you can destroy the stuff that Russia is sending or the aircraft or the even airstrips, then you don't need as many air defense systems. You know what I mean? 
And so that's why it's so important to be able to destroy that stuff. And you're probably saying, well, what weapons? Ukraine needs more long-range weapons. And so France, Germany, Italy, and Poland are going to develop a new long-range cruise missile. Something that, you know, could be about 500 kilometers, which it's about, I think, 310 miles. Hopefully that conversion is right. Now, how long will that take? I know, that could take quite some time. Anyway, that is everything that was announced just in the past two days when it comes to military aid for Ukraine. You know, some of that stuff is getting delivered. We know F-16s, by the way, according to Ukraine's foreign minister, F-16s have arrived in Ukraine. Or as he said, they've it's been fulfilled. The question is, when are they going to be used? And as he says, you'll find out. They'll all be answered soon. And I hope so. And for those asking, are they going to go after the Crimean Bridge or the Kerch Bridge? I don't think that's a target right now. With the, after the supply chain of everything Russia has, then we have to go to the front lines and give air support to our troops because they really need that. We have to make the move from ground support to air support, and I think it's really going to help. All that being said, let me know what you think about all of this in the comment section below. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. I'm Joey. Stay safe.